Hello and welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and I've been making a weekly tank update, and I call it my reef vlog, and I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this. Now, the first two episodes have been about my tangs having ick, and to let you know, the tangs still have ick. Sucks. I'm working on it. But for today's reef vlog, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a bit of a coral update, because the coral is doing extremely well. In fact, the coral's doing so well, I don't want to tear the tank down to get the tangs out to treat the ick properly. To treat the tangs properly, I would want to pull all my fish out, every fish, put them in quarantine, treat them all with copper, kill the ick, need it gone, and then let the tank sit fallow for six weeks. But I have a big tank with lots of rock work, Lots of coral that's growing on everywhere and doing extremely well. So come check out the coral and how well everything's doing. Starting with the full tank overview, I think this tank is really coming along nicely. I've just about got it fully stocked with coral. That's not to say there isn't more room, but it's really growing in. I've got it really stocked well. I'm really happy with the overall look of this tank. So let's start with the problems in this tank. And other than the ick, there aren't very many. But the thing I hate the most is I went ahead and put a Mag 5 pump inside the tank to help deal with the ick. This is the pump that runs down to the UV sterilizer. I put it inside the tank because that's where the ick parasites are at. So hopefully I will capture more parasites having it inside the tank than somewhere else. I really don't like the look of the pump in the tank. It's also noisy, so long term, this thing's coming out. But first, let's beat the egg. The other little problem I'm having is I've got Mohanos and Aptasia growing in my tank. Now this is more just due to neglect. I've had so many other things going on with the tank that I just haven't had time to go after these guys. But their population's growing, so I gotta beat them down. Moving on, let's talk about the Acroporas in the tank. I bought three large Acroporas at reef stock, and I've had mixed results. One, RTN almost immediately. Flesh just fell off and it was dead within a couple days of putting it in the tank. Another started to STN. It was slowly losing all of the skin from the bottom. I fragged the crap out of it. I broke it up into a bunch of little pieces. I'm down to two tiny little nubs that are surviving. And of course, this Acropora is doing okay. It started off as green, now it's kind of this brown color. And it's alive on the back side that you really can't see here. It's bleached out, and that's the side that receives most of the light. Hopefully, in the long term, it's gonna color back up and do reasonably well in my tank. So I'm changing my Acro strategy a little bit. I've purchased two small inexpensive frags that are aquacultured. They came out of other reefers tanks who traded them in at the LFS. And from now on, these are the kind of acros I'm going to try to buy. They're inexpensive and let's face it, they're used to aquarium life. Unfortunately, when I shot this video, the urchin wanted to be on camera instead of the acro. Six months ago or so, my Manipora colony started to get covered in this brown algae that killed the flesh of the Manipora. And I lost probably 50% of the tissue area on the Manipora. I fragged what I could, but some of it was just unfraggable. Well, six months later after dealing with this problem, things are starting to recover. All of my monies are showing good coloration and good growth. They're not back to their former glory, but they are growing quickly, their coloration's back, and they're doing much, much, much better. A couple of my monies were completely unaffected by the hair algae growth, whatever that stuff was. But this red encrusting Monty is growing insane. I've got it high up under really high light. The coloration's great. Its growth is better than I've ever seen. I've had this coral for like four years. And my sponge odes the same way. Up high in the tank under really high light, these things are going crazy. Probably the most growth lately has been in this green plating money though. It was a little affected by the brown hair algae and a 
few months ago when I took Pinky out of the tank, I broke this coral and I broke some pretty good sized pieces off of it. Now it has bounced back, it has grown immensely, and this coral is the size of a dinner plate and it's no exaggeration. I think it's safe to say that the SPS in this tank is really starting to do well. The T5s gave me problems to begin with, but now that everything's used to them, the coloration is much, much better. The growth is incredible on some of the Poras right now. So the big goal going forwards is to start stocking this tank with more Acropora. Sorry for the glare, but of the sponges I bought at Reef Stock, the red one died almost immediately, but the yellow one's actually holding up pretty well. I get a little sand on them, which I have to blow off, but it's actually doing pretty good. The other interesting thing that came from Reef Stock was the scallop. I put him in the tank and he immediately blew himself under a rock and I didn't see him for like a month. Well, I was looking at the tank the other day and I noticed him. He's kind of up in the cave, jammed in the rock, and he looks like he's doing fantastic. Unfortunately, this is the best video I could get of him. And then of course, like always, the LPS, the Softies, the Gorgonias, they're all growing and thriving. Everything is doing extremely well. Overall, in this tank, the coral is doing just so good. Everything is doing good. And it's taken me a long time to get here. And it's been six months of failure in rebuilding. And everything, coral-wise, is pretty much right in the tank. All my coral problems are minor. It would be so hard for me to tear all of this out and break corals and stress them out and start over. What I'm afraid of is I might be at the point in my hobby where I have to decide, is this a coral tank with fish or a fish tank with coral? And that's the main reason I haven't pulled the tangs. I'm really leaning towards this is a coral tank that I put fish in. Thank you for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to Reef Talk, the channel yet, the link is down below. Reef Talk is the talk show between myself, Scott Anderson, and Steve Rotter of RotterTube Reef. Every week, we talk about the reef tank hobby. We have guests on. Sometimes the two of us just talk about reef stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's a fun show. So please subscribe to that. Thanks again for watching.